Uh, good morning. Um, today's video is a little bit uh, different uh, than uh, my other videos. Uh, it's not like an in-depth uh, introduction of a particular tool, but it's a, a video that uh, on the one side is is uh, made for a, a course that I'm participating in at the University of Amsterdam uh, in the bachelor's. Um, and on the other side, it's an attempt to talk a little bit about uh, some of the really basics that you need to think about or learn before even starting with doing any kind of uh, data analysis. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, five things that I think are really very helpful before you even you know, start doing any kind of uh, data analysis. They have to do with the computer use. It's maybe a little bit more complex than what I have here on the screen, how to turn on a computer. Um, but it's uh, uh, some of the basics uh, that uh, I have received a lot of questions about, and I think uh, sometimes uh, can be a real struggle. So uh, I hope uh, this is useful for you. So I'm gonna jump right into the first point, and that is using Google. So yeah, I mean, for most of you, uh, it's really, you know, kind of obvious how to use a, a search engine, but, but I still wanna uh, stress it because it's really so important when it comes to, you know, uh, doing data analysis, encountering maybe problems with your computer, with the tools you're using, to really develop the reflex to uh, formulate a question and, and type that question into a, a search engine. Um, there are a number of, you know, kind of more specific things that one can learn. And I'm, I'm going to link um, this uh, cheat sheet in the description uh, below. So search engines like, uh, like Google have a number of uh, interesting parameters that you can use. For example, you know, you can uh, uh, add a minus to a, to a word and thereby uh, exclude it. Um, I also find the possibility to um, uh, uh, look for exact phrases very useful. Um, another parameter I sometimes use is the site parameters. So you can really limit your search to a particular uh, website. Um, but these are just a number of parameters that, uh, uh, you know, can kind of help. I think the most important thing is to really develop the reflex to uh, very quickly when you're stuck, when you're encountering a problem, to go to a search engine and yeah, in particular Google and, and search for your, your problem. Um, just as an uh, example, let's, let's say you have a new computer and um, uh, you want to uh, show file extension, extensions in the Finder or the Explorer on Windows. Um, you know, you would simply start typing how to show file extensions. And then, and then your operating system, right? And um, let's do the Windows 10 here. Uh, uh, very quickly, you're gonna get, you know, the right, uh, uh, not just the right answer, but even here, you know, you get um, uh, uh, even an annotated, uh, annotated screenshots uh, and so forth. And and there's a lot of this kind of help out there. Um, almost any kind of problem, you're gonna find a solution to. So. Uh, whenever you're stuck, of course, it's great to, you know, try out yourself to find a solution, but develop the reflex to very quickly, you know, go to a search engine and try to solve your problem uh, that way. Yeah, so this is a good lead over to kind of the second topic I want to talk about, uh, maybe a bit more, um, and that is dealing with files on your computer. Um, so a lot of people, I think, um, uh, nowadays encounter computers first in the form of mobile phones or tablets, and then the move to something like uh, Windows or, or Mac OS is a little bit more complicated. And, and I think it makes a lot of sense to spend some time and really familiarize yourself with the operating systems. Uh, uh, that exist on desktop computers, which you always have to use, you know, when doing a little bit more advanced uh, work. So um, stuff like knowing how to turn on file extensions. Um, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, by file extensions, I mean simply the very often three uh, characters at the end of a file, which give you some indication of uh, what the file is about, you know, what kind of type it is, right? So uh, to turn that on, uh, on Mac, you know, you can just go to, uh, to Finder, Finder Preferences, 
uh, show all file name extensions. And, and on Windows, it's it's very much the same. I'm gonna quickly show you. Go over to uh, to Windows. Uh, you just open um, Explorer, uh, uh, and then you have the View here, Options, View again, and then you have the possibility to hide extensions for known file types. And you absolutely don't want to do that, right? So you want to always have uh, extensions being visible uh, to you. Very, very important. Um, and, and these kind of things, they extend to uh, file handling more generally, right? One of the things that I think um, uh, are uh, really important here is, um, you know, I'm recording this at the end of August, the semester is starting, uh, is to think about, like, how do you want to organize your files on your computer? Um, this has to do with you know, in, in general, like getting things in order and being able to um, to find things again when you download files and you store them somewhere, um, you know, you, you know how to, to, to get back to them. So that's very important. But you also really want to think about uh, backing up your files. Um, file loss is not a question if it happens, but, but when it happens. At one point, you know, computer parts they fail or you know there's a, a virus or there's some other kind of uh, you know damage so you want to make sure to have a, a backup of your files um, this could either be an external hard drive a lot of people are nowadays uh, using um, cloud services like Dropbox OneDrive Google Drive um, to store and share their uh, uh, files and um, you know it may be interesting for you to um, to actually use one of those uh, services and then simply, you know, store uh, all of your files uh, in there. You know, you could, uh, for example, um, uh, you know, have a OneDrive as your uh, your uh, uh, root drive, and then have maybe a a, um, a a folder called Work, and this is where you store all of your files. You know, here on, on this machine, I have a um, I have a, a folder Work that's directly here at the root. Um, you know, uh, on Windows, every drive has a has a drive letter, right? And I just created a um, a folder work here, and then all of my work goes into it. I mean, I don't use this machine all that much, so uh, so uh, uh, it's kind of uh, kind of empty. But if I go back uh, uh, to to uh, uh, my Mac, you know, I have uh, here on the left side my um, my my favorites. And um, um, here, for example, I use uh, OneDrive, you know, I have uh, certain, um, you know, research folders and so forth. So um, making sure that all of your data is stored in a clear location that you can identify um, that when you download a file, you know, it goes in a folder that maybe, you know, is inside of your work. Maybe if you're doing, um, if you're currently in in, in, in in university, you have maybe a, a folder for your for your classes, maybe a folder for each class, um, and then you know you download the the folder uh, the, the the files in there, and don't just leave them in uh, in your uh, download folders. Um, that's very important, but I also think it's very important to think about um, you know if you work with data. Make sure on the one side that you always keep the original files that you downloaded, put them into some kind of um, you know folder that you name in a particular way. So here in this folder, I have another you know that I named uh, originals. I like to use the underscore uh, in in uh, a certain uh, folder names so that they are automatically uh, sorted at the top. Um, you keep the original downloaded files in that folder and then. The files you actually work with are a copy of um, of of those files. Uh, a good thing is also to like rename your files. You know, um, uh, when you're not, you know, when you're working with maybe you know a lot of YouTube channels or a lot of Twitter accounts or you know hashtags, um, it really makes sense to change the file name to um, something that you can very uh, easily uh, recognize. So familiarizing yourself with your computer, your file names, um, how the how the uh, folder structure works, it's really really important. Um, folder structure, I mean that for example on a, on a Mac, you know you have um, uh, uh, all um, uh, users uh, have their own folder that exists in you know the root folder users, 
and then well that's my name and then you get your basic folder here so 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 that's maybe a place where to store uh, your data or as i said before maybe using a a cloud service uh, it really makes sense at the beginning of the semester to go through this and you know organize it in a way that on the one side you can find all your stuff and on the other side that you're really sure to have uh, a backup of uh, of everything you do and that you know that uh, you don't have a, a file loss and that you make sure that you know whenever you work with data files your originals are are saved somewhere uh, somewhere safe and and you can be sure to uh, to get back to that data if you know something happens The third thing I want to quickly talk about uh, is something that also really has to do with knowing the computer you're working with, um, and that is uh, what's sometimes referred to as the command line or, or, or the terminal. Um, and this is basically a second kind of interface that you have on your computer. What do I mean? So, you know, here we have a, a graphical user interface that, you know, has windows and so forth, and menus, um, a mouse pointer, uh, um, you know, and all of those elements. But on almost every computer, there's uh, a, another kind of inter interface that is uh, um, a command line or a, or a terminal um, that allows you to interact with your computer a little bit differently. And this can really come in handy sometimes when you're doing stuff that's a little bit more advanced. So there are tools out there that you cannot easily start by just, you know, clicking on them or, um, you know, uh, uh, using some kind of graphical way of, of working with them. So just to give you an idea, something like Instaloader, which is a tool uh, really great that allows you to scrape Instagram. It's a so-called command line tool and has a command line interface and you can only execute it from the command line. Um, and it really makes sense to have a bit of an idea how all of this works. So I'm just gonna uh, start with uh, uh, the Mac here and I'm gonna start this by typing terminal into, uh, into Spotlight and, and if I start that, I get here Yes, this um, uh, black window that allows me to simply type uh, commands in here. Um, normally, the terminal or command line is always um, set to a particular folder. Uh, here on, on Mac, we don't see that really uh, uh, just looking at, um, um, at uh, the, the terminal where we're, where we're at. So we can type uh, uh, pwd and that gives me the information that I'm currently in users. Uh, a reader, which well is my last name, and um, uh, sometimes you know to 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 start something or to work with the command line, you have to change um, where your uh, terminal is currently pointed to. So I could go you know one folder back in the hierarchy, which is cd short for change directory, and then dot dot, um, and then I'm in users, right? Or I could go forward. You know, with a large U, it's case sensitive, and simply type. Um, oh yeah, I'm currently here. Can I go to writer back again, and I'm and I'm back, right? Um, and I could, you know, uh, 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 type ls, which shows me all the files that exist here, um, and then I can navigate uh, further. Um, this is something you can Google quite easily, but it's really highly useful in in some cases. Um, Going back to the, the PC, that's not all that dissimilar, actually. Here I go into a search and I type CMD, it's a command prompt, and I get something very different, uh, very similar. Um, here you can see that uh, uh, the, uh, the command line tool actually shows me where I'm currently at, but I can use uh, similar commands to, you know, uh, navigate around here and um, you know, maybe I have to uh, start a script that exists somewhere here, and I could, you know, start that with the Python command, you know, some script name, and then it would uh, start uh, start from here. Um, so uh, uh, the command line, yes, yeah, sometimes a bit uh, intimidating, but it can really be uh, helpful to, you know, just play around with it a little bit. It's really not that complicated. You just have the, the, the you know, you have to start it with CMD. Uh, here on on the PC and terminal uh, on the Mac, and then you know uh, play around a little bit with it, and thereby kind of lose um, maybe that intimidation 
and you know the moment you have to use it uh, it's something you'll remember and, and you know about and you can then kind of look up again. The fourth topic I want to talk about also really just continues from there and has, has to do with uh, files. Um, so when we do data analysis and, you know, we get, um, you know, maybe we download some online data from, you know, uh, a, a Twitter capturing uh, a software or uh, we, um, uh, you know, go uh, to some statistics database. Um, very often we get files that have you know, some kind of table structure, but they can come in different uh, file formats. And, um, well, one of the reasons why we always want to show the extensions of uh, files is that we get like a first hint, ah, you know, what kind of uh, file format uh, uh, could, this, could this be? So here in this case, I have a tab file uh, that comes from um, uh, uh, NetViz, a uh, um, Facebook data extractor that now it's uh, defunct, but um, it can uh, uh, serve uh, as an example here. Um, and, you know, if you've never heard of this file type, well, you could just Google it. You know, what is a tab file? And you will find uh, uh, as an answer that is a, a, a tab separated file. So it's very similar to a CSV file, a comma separated file, where, you know, rows and columns are distinguished by, you know, inserting a comma in them. And this is then how a uh, something like a spreadsheet software knows where the rows are and where the columns are. Um, and uh, uh, we could uh, simply try and open this uh, in, uh, in uh, Excel, for example. Um, we're just going to try this here. Microsoft Excel. Takes a little second to, uh, uh, to, to open, but uh, as you'll see, ah, okay, um, uh, this uh, uh, seems file seems to be uh, recognized, so uh, uh, Excel knows how to deal with it, and um, uh, uh, this is this is good. Um, but as you can see, and, and this is kind of the the uh, um, second issue that um, yeah you may never encounter, but um, uh, there's a good chance you will if you work with Excel, um, and that is file encodings. So files not only come in different formats but the characters inside of these files can be encoded differently. Um, most data files that we work with are some kind of text files, but how the text is encoded, uh, yeah, that can really differ and that can be a real hassle. So in this case, you can see what it is. That's really weird. So is this file broken or what's, uh, what's happening here? Um, so in this case, what's happening here, I can already tell you, is that uh, um, uh, Excel does not recognize the encoding of that file and it thinks it's a different encoding. And in order to actually get that right, um, I have to do something else. I cannot just open it, I have to import it. So I go to File Import and I look for CSV files. And then I have this file here in OneDrive, no in Dropbox, research, page. Oh, but I can't open it. Why can't I not open it? It's because Excel doesn't know the .tab extension. So that's a real problem. Um, what do I do? Well, what I could do is I simply go back here and I change this to CSV because it is some kind of CSV type file, right? Going back to Excel, File, import, CSV file, import. Have to go back to Dropbox, research, page. Ah, and now I can open it, right? So, so, so don't hesitate to um, change up file extensions. Um, software is sometimes a bit fickle, right? But make sure that you have the original files uh, backed up somewhere and do not modify them. Then you can, you know, play around with uh, what you have uh, 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 without, you know, uh, being afraid that you break something. So, ah, okay, now I have some import options here and this is important. Hit file origin. That's basically the encoding. Most files you will get from online tools are encoded in UTF-8. It's a Unicode, it's a particular kind of encoding that is capable of encoding a large number of characters. So accents, 
um, uh, you know, uh, non-Latin scripts, but also stuff like uh, emojis. So I'm selecting here Unicode, yes, and then here it's delimited. I know it's a delimited file. It's delimited by tab, and you can see, you know, the moment I put tab here, this changes, and ah, yeah, very nice. And there we go. I put it into a new sheet. Yeah, and you can now see that these jumbled characters that we had before are emojis. So if you work with something like Google Spreadsheets, you may never encounter this problem. Um, but, you know, there's a good chance that at one point uh, you will. And um, uh, encodings is a really, uh, uh, yeah, uh, um, complicated uh, uh, subject. So, you know, be prepared to do some, uh, some Googling. Now we solved it here for Excel, but maybe the, the tools that you are working with uh, work a little bit different and uh, then you have to find the particular solution for that tool. One of the things that I really like to use uh, for all of this uh, is uh, a text editor. So um, a text editor is not something like Word. It's a, Word is a, a word processing software that does all kind of formatting. No, a text editor is something that's able to open text files of any kind. So on Mac, you have a, a text edit pre-installed, which is, you know, a text editor, very basic one on, uh, on PC. Let's go over real quick. You have uh, uh, something called a, a notepad. You know, ba very basic text editor. But I would probably recommend downloading something like this tool here. Well, here you have some, some, some code. You can see already that it's, you know, capable of, of, of doing much more than simply opening files. But this is Sublime Text. It exists for both uh, uh, um, PC and, and Mac. Um, uh, Linux, of course, but, uh, well, if you use Linux, this is probably not a, a video for, uh, for you. Um, something like Sublime Text is uh, a more capable text editor that can, you know, has some additional features. It can do stuff like search and replace really well. Um, it can really come in handy also for opening like very big files that you don't know what to do with. Uh, it's very, very fast. So it can open things very, very quickly. And I often just use it to like inspect a file. So if I go back to, uh, to my Mac here and I have this file that I've looked at before, I can open it here with, doesn't suggest, but I can just go here, other, sublime text. It's going to take a second uh, to, uh, to open. Yeah, and here we go. And, and here I have basically a kind of a non-interpreted view uh, of the file in the sense that there's no attempt to distinguish columns. But what I can see here is in the first line, ah, you know, there seem to be variable names. And, and I can see here that, ah, okay, those are, those variable names here, those column names are separated by a tab. You know, I can see that very well here. I, I just, you know, push the cursor. So I, 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 can, I can know something about the file. Um, maybe if there's no file extension, maybe if I'm, if I'm unfamiliar, I can also already see that, uh, oh yeah, there's some, some emojis in here, some Unicode. I could copy and paste the text from here somewhere else. I could actually also change the encoding of the file. So uh, uh, a text editor is something that is extremely helpful. And I think uh, Sublime Text is uh, one, of the, one of the best ones out there. There are others out there. But uh, familiarizing yourself with a text editor like this, I think uh, makes, uh, makes a lot of uh, sense. Uh, and it helps you with you know, solving fi file problems, um, such as the ones that I just described with uh, uh, encodings or discovering what's in there. But uh, it also you know, really allows you to do uh, uh, much, much more, like searching and replacing, uh, uh, like maybe you know, uh, editing the file a little bit uh, uh, directly yourself, um, and so forth. Yeah, so the last point I want to quickly talk about is the general awesomeness of spreadsheet software. Now, this may sound a little bit boring, ah, spreadsheets, 
Um, maybe a lot of you want to very quickly go towards visualization or uh, uh, you know do uh, more involved statistical analysis. But if you start with you know data analysis, uh, familiarizing yourself with at least one kind of spreadsheet software makes a lot of sense. You can do a lot with spreadsheet software. You can do visualization, you can do analysis, but you can also do uh, things like data cleaning, filtering very well. So it's, it's very flexible. It's a bit daunting because a lot of these spreadsheet tools, they have a lot of functions, but there's also really great support out there. So, you know, Googling uh, what you need to do will very quickly give you a, uh, an answer. I mean, the most well-known spreadsheet software is, of course, uh, Excel, but I'm going to um, use uh, uh, Google Sheets here as an, as an example. And, and here I've already uploaded to my drive, Google Drive, some, uh, some files. This is a tab file, uh, as we've seen before. And if I uh, double-click on it, um, uh, Google Drive is going to recognize it, and it's going to you know, show me the, the, the standard uh, tabular uh, file format here. So I have some rows, I have some columns or variables. And, and this is basically a file that um, comes from, uh, um, you know, an online tool, YouTube data tools, and it shows us the uh, video. So each line is uh, information on a video posted on the channel uh, of the European Parliament. And you can see, you know, every line is one of those videos. And then there's a description, a title, duration, and so forth, right? And uh, um, Google Drive suggests that I open that with uh, Google Sheets. So that works uh, uh, automatically. It's, it's, it's you know, going to uh, take some time to, uh, to uh, uh, open, but then I have basically the same data here in this uh, very familiar format. And, and I don't want to, you know, go too deeply into, into this, um, just maybe show you two or three things that you can, that you can do here. Um, the students uh, doing new media and dig digital culture at the University of Amsterdam, you have a very complete uh, data management worksheet that shows you a lot of different things. So I would really suggest uh, when you work on your project to keep that handy and you know try out as many functions as uh, as possible. But I just want to quickly um, you know show you maybe two things that I think are are quite um, quite interesting. Um, one is maybe how to do the how to use a formula. A formula could be you know all kinds of things. Uh, can be like counting elements or could already be a bit more uh, statistical analysis. So I could, for example, say, okay, so I see here that uh, I have the, the duration of second in seconds of each one of those videos, and I could ask, you know, what is the what is the average um, the average of um, uh, uh, that uh, that duration, right? And I could simply add another row here and um, and start uh, typing the the equal sign, which is basically uh, the, the, the sign to, to, to tell it, oh, now I'm starting a, uh, a formula. And um, uh, average works in a way that I start with basically the first cell that I want to take into account, which would be L and then 3. Okay, that's a position. And then I use the colon. And I want that to go until L, well, I don't remember how many, but basically... Basically, I go to the bottom. There were 3,049 rows, and I add that here, 3,049, close the bracket, and here we go. So the average video um, uh, uh, posted on, um, on that channel has a length of 214 uh, seconds. So there's a bunch of these formulas, right? Um, um, they're very well documented, and uh, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, so I'm just going to delete this row again, and just show you, uh, show you a second function that I think is really, really useful, um, and that is filtering. So you can simply go here to the data uh, menu item and say, hey, create a filter, and what it's going to do is it basically recognizes, you know, all of these um, uh, uh, variable names up here and adds this tiny uh, green uh, triangle, which allows me to add a filter that, um, you know, could be numerical. So I want to like isolate all of the videos that have maybe, you know, uh, a certain like count, right? Um, um, or I could, and this is very interesting, look here in the video title for all of the titles that mention 
the elections, right? So when I click here, you know, I, I get the option to sort all of the data, which is really nice. So I can sort my, my spreadsheet by, yeah, each one of those uh, uh, columns, but I can also filter by condition. And I could, for example, say, oh, I want to filter, you know, all that that are empty, but here text contains, that's very practical. Then I can say, you know, election, and oh yeah, that's a difficult one because I, I recorded a very low screen resolution. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. So I, I get the okay button. Yeah, that's gonna do something, zoom in again. Um, and you can see that now, yeah, we went from, you know, a couple of thousand um, uh, videos to just a, a, a smaller number. Um, to count to count this, you can either do this manually or you can um, just mark it and it's gonna tell you how many there are, or you're gonna, I can use a formula that I think is very interesting called subtotal that combines um, very, very well with filters. So this is not meant to be an introduction to spreadsheet software, simply to you know give you some pointers. Um, I think it's really helpful for all kinds of uh, uh, data work and very often you're gonna maybe use it um, uh, uh, in a you know a methodological chain where you you know you get the data from somewhere, then you open it in a spreadsheet. Maybe you filter it. Maybe you um, uh, um, you know modify some data. Maybe you create some new columns you know that are derived from other columns, and then you use that new data in analytics or visualization software. So yeah, again, um, familiarizing yourself with spreadsheets really makes uh, a lot of sense. And um, well, you know, these five points are maybe, you know, very basic for some of you, um, but uh, um, could also be that it's a bit of a reminder. Uh, just overall, you know, spend some time thinking about like the logistics of data analysis. It's, there's of course, uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, um, like more intellectual stuff involved, like, you know, thinking about constructing your methodology. But some of those basics, they can really, um, you know, help you getting started or they can help you avoid some really, you know, problematic mistakes, like if you uh, lose your data or um, they can maybe give you uh, ideas for how to do certain things, uh, how to organize um, your data, how to make sure that you don't lose it, um, how to, you know, recognize a file type, maybe deal with problematic uh, encodings and so forth. So I hope this was useful for you and... Um, I hope I see you soon.